the Jack Benny Program. Starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Rochester, Dennis A., Bob Crosby, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, yesterday Jack Benny returned from a trip to New York where he attended a dinner given for Bob Hope by the Friars Club. Right now it's morning and Jack is just getting up. Ah, uh, good morning, Rochester. Good morning, boss. How'd you sleep? Oh, pretty good. Only I was awfully cold last night. You're cold every night. Maybe you haven't got enough blood. Rochester, I'm not anemic. Now lay out my clothes and get me a clean shirt. I don't want to be late for rehearsal. Yes, sir. Not anemic. I wonder what he'd say if he found out that every morning I sneak in the bathroom and put ketchup on his razor to keep up his morale. <laughs> now, let's see. The shirt should be in this drawer. Socks, handkerchief, sweater. Uh-oh, what's this? A bottle of ketchup. Hmm. Rochester, how about my shirt? Coming, boy. Here it is. Oh, thanks. Say, boss, while I was getting the shirt out of the drawer, I noticed a bottle of ketchup. Oh, you did, eh? Yeah. Where'd you get it? Rochester, come here a minute. Huh? I got a little surprise for you. Surprise? Yeah. If you keep putting it on, I'm going to keep scraping it off. I'm not wasting it just to please my vanity. <laughs> Rochester, look, I want to... I get it. Hello, Jack. Oh, hello, Mary. Come on in. When did you get back from New York? Oh, about 4 o'clock this morning. It was a nice trip, though. Uh, how'd the Bob Hope dinner turn out? Oh, it was swell. Everybody was there. Gee, what celebrity. And you know what? I sat on the dais right next to Bernard Baruch. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah. You haven't seen him since you went to school together. <laughs> You know, Mary, you always say the cutest thing just before you get a cut in salary. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was only teasing. Now, you better hurry. We'll be late for rehearsal. Why? We've got a lot of... Oh, my goodness, look what time it is. I never realized it was this late. You still have to shave. I know, I know. It won't take long. I'll take off my tie. I'll get the razor. I'll get the ketchup. <laughs> you haven't time for that now. You go get the car, Rochester. We'll be down in a minute. Try the motor again, Rochester. Yes, sir. Uh, try it again, Rochester. Only this time, step on the throttle, advance the spark, pull out the choke, and hold down the clutch. Keep talking, boss. So far, you haven't named one thing we've done. <laughs> all right, all right. Try the motor again. Jack, last month when the automobile show was in town, you said you were going down and look at a new car. I did, but the one I wanted to buy, they're not making yet. You see, it's that revolutionary car with three wheels. Three wheels? Is that good? It's one more than we've got now. <laughs> oh, stop. <laughs> Try the motor again. Will you? Yes, sir. <laughs> there we are. I knew we wouldn't have any trouble. Rochester, here we are at the studio. Yes, sir. See, I wish there was some place to park along the street here. Oh, for heaven's sake, Jack. Why don't you put it in a parking lot? Yeah, I guess we'll have to. 
All right, Rochester, drive in here. Oh, boy, a real parking lot. Clay, I tell the boys down the lot about this. <laughs> Never mind, just go in. Now, Rochester, you go over and pay the attendant. Miss Livingston and I are going into the studio. Yes, sir. Come on, Mary. Say, Jack, look at that beautiful car driving in. Gee, what a car. A chauffeur in uniform and everything. Must be the president of the network. Here we are, sir. Thank you, James. Mary, it's Dennis. Let's watch this. I'll get your things out of the car, sir. Your coat, sir. Thank you. Your hat, sir. Thank you. Your Wall Street Journal. Thank you. Your Buck Rogers disintegrator. <laughs> Thanks. Hey, hey, Dennis. Dennis. Huh? Oh, hello, Mr. Benny. Hello, Mary. Gee, Dennis, I've never seen such a beautiful car. Where'd you get it? Oh, my mother gave it to me for a going away present. Dennis, where are you going? Well, she doesn't care as long as I go. <laughs> We'd better get into the studio. We'd be late. Yeah, come on, let's go. All right, fellas. Okay, fellas, let's run through that number once more. Uh, hold it, Bob. Hold it. I'm here. Oh, hi, Jack. Uh, I was just rehearsing the band. Well, that like, Say, wait a minute. Aren't some of the boys missing? Yeah, Remley, Bagby, and Sammy the drummer won't be here for the show. Why not? Well, last night they were listening to a quiz program, and the MC was asking questions about arithmetic. What's that got to do with it? Well, one of the questions was about fractions. It was, how many times will one-fifth go into three? <laughs> So they started working it out. Uh-huh. And by the time they killed off 22 fifths, they lost interest in the answer. I can't understand. I thought when Phil Harris left, the boys would change. Oh, they will, Jack. They will. But when? Well, as soon as they find out that Phil is gone. <laughs> well, Bob, who do they think you are? Well, I don't know, but they keep calling me Alice. <laughs> Well, don't worry, Bob. For five years, they thought I was Evelyn and her magic violin. <laughs> Gosh, the free dinners that I've had. <laughs> well, go on with the rehearsal, Bob, so we can get into the sketch here. Well, shall I rehearse my song first, Mr. Benny? Yes, go ahead, Dennis. Then we'll go right on with the play. I was 
Very good, Dennis. Very good. And now, kids, let's rehearse the play we're going to do. Oh, Don. Oh, yes, Jack. Uh, set the scene, will you? Okay. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we present our version of The Snows of Kilimanjaro. Produced by 20th Century Fox, makers of that new picture, Niagara, starring yours truly, Don Wilson. Don, <laughs> stick to the script. You weren't the star of Niagara. I know, but I need the publicity. My calendars aren't selling at all. <laughs> Look it. Just read what's written, will you please? Okay. We spent a whole week writing. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we present our version of The Snows of Kilimanjaro, which starred Gregory Peck, Susan Hayward, and Ava Gardner. Our story opens in the African jungle, at the foot of the majestic snow-capped mountain, Kilimanjaro. <laughs> Lying here helpless, while all the members of my safari are starving because I can't go out and hunt fresh meat for them. Don't worry about that. This morning I went out in the jungle and killed a lion. But wait a minute, Susan. We're out of ammunition. How did you kill the lion? I strangled it. <laughs> wow. How in, the <laughs> How in the world could you possibly bring yourself to strangle a lion? I used one hand. I gave it a fighting chance. <laughs> when is that medicine coming? When will the plane get here? When, when, when? The plane didn't arrive with the medicine, and I got worse. So in desperation, Susan sent for a native witch doctor. The witch doctor came, and for the next two hours, he kept stuffing hot sand into my mouth. When my hat got too big for me, I realized he was shrinking my head. <laughs> Fortunately, I stopped him in time. But to this day, I wear a size two and three eight. <laughs> I shall never forget that witch doctor. He sprinkled me with a powder made from ground tiger teeth. And he chanted his weird voodoo incantation. Igamawa, Igamawa, moo, moo, moo. Tagaluga, Tagaluga, moo, moo, moo. Aye, aye. Oh, doctor, I'm in such pain. Here, you take them these herbs, you come morning sun, you'll feel all the better like me. Oh, that's wonderful, doctor. How much do I owe you? Nothing. Blue cross. <laughs> the witch doctor left. And as the night wore on, my feverish mind was frightened by the sounds of the jungle. The roar of the lion. Yeah. <laughs> the cry of the wild boar. <laughs> the frightened whinny of our horses. <laughs> the wild chattering of the monkeys. <laughs> the 
maniacal screech of the hyena. <laughs> you have here, senorita. Gracias, senor. And it's very big, too. Si, sí, senor. Gee, it's so big. Do you know how much it costs? No, I just work here. Senor May owns the company. <laughs> there, too? <laughs> that was how my romance with Maria started, and it blossomed rapidly. We went everywhere together, dancing, swimming, and finally she took me to the bullfight. Susan, I must, I must have been dreaming. Has a plane arrived yet with the medicine? No, they were halfway across the Atlantic and they had to turn back for the peroxide. For my leg? No, for me. I wasn't born a blonde. Susan's voice soothed me. <laughs> and again I fell asleep. I forgot the pain of the present as I remembered the pleasures of the past. And it was at this point I remembered Ava. I first met Ava in Paris. Gay Paris. Ava had everything. Beauty, poise, and intelligence. But even though she was a society heiress, she insisted on earning her living by singing in a tiny French nightclub called the Bayou. I shall 
never forget the first time I heard her. As she sang. We're going to do the town. I'm going to start by drinking champagne out of your slipper. Come on, put it on the table. Okay, there. Go ahead, start pouring. Take your foot out of it first. <laughs> That's better. Now I'll fill the slipper with champagne for me. There. Now I'll fill your other slipper for you. Ava, am I the first man who ever drank champagne from your slipper? Oh, they all do. You're kidding. No, I'm not. When I walk home from here, I sound like Chloe coming through the swamp. <laughs> hmm. I asked Ava to marry me, but she turned me down. So I married Susan and came here to Africa. The pain in my leg now is unbearable. I had almost given up hope. When suddenly, I heard a droning noise. Look, Mac, it's a plane! Benny is a regular feature of the United States Armed Forces Radio Service.